Hey, Mr. P here. This is our application video on how to determine postmortem interval or PMI using actual insect evidence, using forensic entomology to determine a PMI um, and then ultimately hopefully tell us the actual day uh, the murder took place. Okay, so here is a sample problem. Um, in this particular problem, a body was discovered at 8 o'clock a.m on October 30th in a car parked at a local park in an attempt to determine the postmortem interval or PMI and establish a time of death maggots were collected from the wounds of the victim at 10 o'clock a.m. on October 30th okay body was found or discovered at 8 maggots were collected at 10 that's important some specimens were collected for rearing uh, rearing that's that means taken to a local forensic lab and then grown to adulthood when brought back to the laboratory, it was found that the maggots were feeding second instar larvae. That tells us the current stage. They were grown or reared at 16 degrees C, uh, 16 degrees Celsius, and emerged as adults at 9 o'clock p.m. on November 6th. Again, that's important. The species found has a published life cycle of 286 total hours grown at 21 degrees Celsius. So... This is some, not all, but some of the information that would have been gained um, by forensic investigators at the actual crime scene. Um, and this is all of the information you need to know in order for a forensic entomologist to determine a time of death or a relatively close time of death, okay, a window, um, utilizing forensic entomology and utilizing insect activity to help us do that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at the total time it takes for this species of fly to grow to adulthood okay it has a published life cycle a known published life cycle for complete metamorphosis it takes roughly 286 hours for a fly to grow from egg to adult at 21 degrees celsius so we calculate the adh of the total life cycle 286 hours at 21 degrees means 286 times 21 gives us 6,006 accumulated degree hours, ADH, which is the amount of thermal energy it is required to grow one fly from egg to adult for this particular species at a constant 21 degrees Celsius. Okay, that is our total life cycle ADH. That is kind of an important um, standard I'll just put this is our standard that we're going to use to kind of compare our uh, non-controlled uh, crime scene to. Okay, this is kind of our control. The next thing you need to look at is um, what it takes to grow the flies that we collected from the crime scene. So the, the maggots, the second instar larva that we collected at the crime scene were reared at 16 degrees C and emerged as adults at 9 o'clock p.m. on November 6th. That is an important kind of piece of information as well. So we collected larvae that were second in star. We grew them at 16 degrees Celsius, and they, they reared or became adults on November 6th at 9 o'clock p.m. So we set up our degree hour table, or our ADH table, and we start on October 30th at the bottom. Remember, we're going to be working backwards. October 30th was the, the collection date. Okay. And then we work up the table to our current date, which is November 6th, which is when the flies emerged as adults. So that obviously stops it. So we go from the time the, the maggots were collected to the time it took for the flies to emerge as adults and we start filling out the table. So on our first date, we have 16 hours, and the 16 hours are collected or determined from 8 o'clock a.m. until midnight of that day. So from 8 to noon, that's roughly four hours, and then from noon to midnight, you have another 12 hours, um, and so you, you get your 16 total hours. So there's 16 total hours of growth time for the maggots on October 30th. Then we have 24 hours of growth time on the 31st, 24 hours on the November 1st, 24 hours on November 2nd, 24 hours on the 3rd, 24 hours on the 4th, 24 hours on the 5th, and then 21 hours on the 6th because they emerged at 9 p.m. So it didn't make it all the way to midnight. 
and so they only had 21 hours to grow or mature on November 6th. That is our total number of hours on these particular dates from the time the maggots were collected till the time the adults emerged. After we determine the number of hours the maggots are growing on each of the days from the time they were collected to the time they emerged as adults, we then can calculate our degree hours. 16 hours times our growth temperature of 16 degrees Celsius gives us 256 degree hours. 24 times 16 is 384. We're going to have 384 for every day that had 24 hours. And then 21 hours times 16 degrees Celsius gives us 336 degree hours. We then combine all of these particular degree hours into an uh, accumulated degree hours, which is ADH, from second instar. Remember, they were second instar when we found them to adult in the lab at 16 degrees it takes if we add all these up 200 or 2896 accumulated degree hours which is represented by ADH okay so in a lab at 16 degrees it took 2896 kind of thermal unit thermal energy units to rear from second instar to adult so we ask a question, what is the ADH or the accumulated degree hours needed for this species to get from egg to second instar? Because we've concluded, like we concluded that it takes roughly this amount of time to go from second to adult. We need to figure out how long it takes to get from egg to second so that we can work backwards from the time the body was discovered to ultimately the time the eggs were laid, which would give us within an hour or two the time of death okay so we know from our published life cycle and I included this particular information in the last video that it takes roughly 23 hours to get from egg to first instar larva it also is published that it takes roughly 27 degree or 27 hours to get from first to second instar so if we add the 23 to 27, that gives us roughly 50 hours of actual time to go from egg to second instar. And so if we take the 50 hours at 21 degrees, which is our known published life cycle, 21 degrees, it takes roughly 1,050 accumulated degree hours to get from, again, egg to second instar. So what does that tell us? It tells us we need to work backwards from October 30th when the body was discovered and we need to go back 1050 accumulated degree hours to tell us the time of death. So we start with another table. Notice in this table again we start with October 30th at the bottom and instead of working up we're working backwards okay we're still working up the table but we're working backwards because we want to figure out how long the body's been there and we have to go backwards to determine that we also notice or should notice that there are different temperatures associated with different days it is not hard to fathom that different days in kansas or different days in the location that you're at will have different average temperatures not every day and not every hour of the day is a constant temperature 24 hours a day okay the temperatures fluctuate sun comes up temp temperatures typically rise sun goes down temperatures decline um, based on the last video I also talked about how to calculate this temperature you basically take the high and the low and you divide them by two or you average the high and low okay and you come up with these kind of average temps in Celsius for the days. So um, that would require you to do some research on what the average temps for each of the days were. Um, and so those will be typically provided for you. So on October 30th, it was determined that the average temp was 14.3, uh, October 29th, 15.7, and so on, all the way back to October 22nd. Now you can go back as far as you need to, you will likely go farther than you actually will need to once you actually kind of identify where on this chart this 1050 accumulated degree hours actually hits but this should give us plenty of room to work um, I don't foresee us needing to go beyond this based on the fact that our second instar larvae are pretty early in the development 
Okay, so we start on October 30th and we start with the number of hours the body was on site on October 30th and the body was discovered at 8 a.m. and so from midnight to 8 gives us 8 hours. So the body was laying in that park for 8 hours on October 30th prior to being discovered. It was 24 hours on October 29th, 24 hours on the 28th, 24 hours on the 27th, 24 on the 26th, 24 hours on the 25th, and so on indefinitely because we don't know when the body was put there, right? Next thing we need to do is figure out the degree hours just like we did over here. We're going to take our eight hours times the average temp, in this case 14.3, to get our degree hours, which ends up being 114.4 degree hours for October 30th. We then take our degrees or our temperature times our hours to get degree hours. All of these will be different because we have a different temperature. You just take 16.2 times 24 to get 388.8. You continue to do that for every row in the table until you have all of the degree hours calculated. Once you have your degree hours calculated, you will combine them to form accumulated degree hours. Now in this chart, we just added all of them up and it ended up being 2,896, but that's because we needed all of these dates from the 30th to the 6th. We don't necessarily need all of these dates. So we will just keep accumulating the degree hours in this column. And so we start with our first row at 114.4, that is the accumulated degree hour so far, because that is the only degree hours, and then we add 114.4 to our next row, which is 376.8, or 0.8, and we get 491. So it's 114 plus 376.8, we get 491.2. Then we add 491.2 to 388.8, and we get 880. Add it to 357.6 and you get 1,237.6. Add this to our next 420 and you get 1,657.6. Add that to our 434.4 and you get 2,092. Add that to 408 and you get 2,500. Add that to 398.4 and you get 2,898.4 accumulated degree hours and add that to the last row at 300 or 333.6 and you get our final 3232 accumulated degree hours. Now, remember I said it took us to go from egg to second instar at 50 hours at 21 degrees get roughly 1050 accumulated degree hours. So we need to figure out on this table where 1050 accumulated degree hours hit and we will determine that it hits somewhere on the 27th, okay? Because we go from the 30th to the 29th, so we go back essentially 24 hours, and we are not anywhere close to our 1,050 accumulated degree hours that are needed in order to rear it from egg to second, so it has to be beyond that. Then we go to October 28th, which is basically 48 hours prior to the body being discovered. It doesn't give us enough time 48 hours prior to the body being discovered, so we have to go beyond that to the next day. If we go full 24 hours, it gets us a total of 1,200. We don't quite need the full 1,200, so it would happen sometime on October 27th. That is kind of our determination. That's our final calculation. We would conclude that the murder took place sometime on October 27th, or at least the body was placed in that particular park on October 27th. The murder might have happened before then if no insect activity would have reached the body, but from our understanding for forensic entomology and what we can do as forensic entomologists, we can determine based on the insects that are on the body at this particular time, the insects colonized the body on October 27th, meaning either the time of death was on October 27th if the murder took place at that park, or the body was dumped in the park on October 27th and then therefore allowed the insects to colonize the body. Okay, PMI most likely on October 27th. That's our final, final con conclusion. Okay, bring your questions to class.
See ya.